Hi, Peter Charles here, and today we're going to look at diffraction in Voigtlander lenses. Keep in mind, diffraction affects all lenses, but today we're just looking at Voigtlanders. I took a f some photos in my office, and I used a fishing reel box as my primary target. And what I wanted to do is see what happens when we take pictures at from f2.8 all the way to f16 and we zoom in on the fishing reel box and see what the effects of diffraction was. Before we get started we should really discuss what diffraction is really about. Now I'm not going to get technical with it because I'll bore everybody and they'll fall asleep. But basically it's the ability for us to focus on a point on the sensor and have it be sharp. And when we're dealing with a large aperture that's fairly easy. The problems come when we go to a small aperture and then the light rays get squeezed together and in the process they start to interfere with each other and that interference causes the, dis the diffraction problem. So let's get started and look at those pictures. Okay this first shot is at f2.8 and as you can see it's reasonably sharp. Uh, so we're not seeing any diffraction here and obviously at f2.8 you're not likely to either. But let's move on and look at f4 and go through the rest of the f-stops. I'd say f4 is probably the sharpest uh, aperture we could use with this uh, 23mm f1.2 lens. So if you're looking for critical sharpness, here's where you want to be, f4. Okay, at f5.6 we're starting to see a slight softening. Not very much. Definitely a very usable aperture. I wouldn't hesitate to take a picture at 5.6 but you can see diffraction is starting to creep in. Now we're at f8 and we're definitely starting to see some diffraction. It's surprising that you think f8 would be the best choice, but in this particular case it isn't. Now at f11 we're definitely seeing diffraction, there is no doubt about it. Uh, again, when you look at uh, the actual photo, it's not really all that noticeable, but boy when you zero in can you ever see it. And finally at f16, no question, there's diffraction. It's quite soft compared to f4 or even f5.6. But then again, I wouldn't be afraid to use f16. Just be aware of that you're not going to get critical sharpness out of it. Okay, I'm just going to rotate through these images so you get a chance to see the difference quite quickly. This rotation really gives you an idea of the difference between f4 and f16. Okay, I'm going to rotate here through the uh, full-size image, and really, can we tell all that much difference? Really, I don't think we should be afraid to use uh, stop-down methods when we're taking photos. Okay, you can see from those two photos that reality is the one shot at f16 is perfectly acceptable for most of our photography. It's only where you needed absolute critical sharpness uh, would you uh, want to be concerned about using f16 or f22 on one of the other lenses. So the point of the matter is it's perfectly usable. However, I want you to think of something. Looking back at the video I, I shot about Voigtlander focusing issues because of the way they stop down when we uh, are using the aperture ring and they become progressively more difficult to focus. If you are having problems putting your best uh, focus point on the subject and you add in diffraction as well, it starts to accumulate and it starts to make the softness problem bigger. So it's something to be aware of. Not, you don't need to be afraid of using F16 or F22, that's not the point. It's rather just be aware of these issues so when you're out in the field using F22 you're, or F16 you're aware of the focusing issues and you're aware of the diffraction issues and you shoot accordingly. And that's really what the point of this video is. So don't be afraid of using Voigtlander lenses. They're perfectly sharp, uh, no complaints whatsoever. And uh, you can see that diffraction isn't a big problem, but it can accumulate with other problems. So keep that in mind. Cheers.